I suppose I should wait to see if it starts. Yes. Hi out there, all of my sick friends and people who couldn't make it today. The new one had the deal works like first. Right? Backward? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's that. Check it out. I'm not sure if it's that. Yeah. 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 I'm 
Oh no. <laughs> we're going to get started in a few minutes. Traffic is at stake, so we're going to give people a bit of time to get here and then we'll do things. But talk amongst yourselves. Feel free to grab a soft drink back there. I think there's pizza coming at some point, so we'll probably handle that as well. Uh, and then, as soon as we're able, we will get this thing on our mic. And these guys are going to see that. No, they're not going to see it. These guys are going to hear me say that like six minutes. <laughs> it's so <laughs> delayed. <laughs> Probably it wasn't there at all. Yes, that's in my mind. There are enough time to get out of our Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> How long are you? Are you supposed to bring something prepared? Yeah. Oh. Not really. Okay. <laughs> 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 and it's interactive like we're going to be going in and out of things. We're just talking to the slide. questions, comments, and we can go off and look at the side or two. Sounds good. Trying to get an idea of how long I can push this. I'm trying to get an idea of how long I can push this. I'm trying to get an idea of how long I in five minutes, in five minutes, you have five minutes to the next flight, five flights. I need, I need the, uh, the, 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 the red and green lights in the back, so I know when I have my con. Yeah. Did you get the little light screen on? Oh, that's way better than what I do. What I do is I appoint somebody in the front row as my timekeeper, and their only job is to raise their hand when I have five minutes left. And the important part is that a lot of people are like, she just did all that with the question. <laughs> and also, they can't ask any questions between then and five minutes until toward the, to the end. Otherwise, I'm like, we're done! And everyone's like, no, we've only been doing it for seven minutes. What are you doing? Like, they can't ask questions, and then everyone thinks I have one. It's very simple, clearly. <laughs> Maybe you need the lights. I probably do. I can just carry around with a stoplight with me. Turn your phone off. Turn the sound phone off. Yeah, you're not trying to have them text Oh, yeah. Except that I have that whole that problem that is becoming more and more prevalent of uh, phantom yeah. vibrations. Yeah. So I'd be like, I'm going to five minutes. Stop. So and I'd constantly be taking your phone out. And I'd be the worst presenter of all time. Set your phone in the constant vibration. It never stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would do it. It's, really awesome. I don't know. it's an interesting thing. Uh, one of those things that by now I should have figured out. Can you go to the next one? Go over to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Peter, it is so much quieter in here. 
Like I feel like I'm sh normally I have to shout, and so I'm going to shout. Can hear No, we can hear me today. <laughs> so welcome oh, everybody to WordPress Kansas City Meetup. To get out of the way of that, because that's just ridiculous. So I'm Joseph Hayden, uh, and how many of you have been here before? Not here at KCC, but here to a meetup. How many of you have not been to a meetup before? All right, got a couple. So hi everybody out there watching us from home. We're going to introduce all of ourselves, and you won't be able to see us or hear us, but it's going to be fantastic. So here in about 60 seconds, once I get finished with all of our little announcements, because we don't really have many today, I'm going to go around to all these tables, and your job is to tell me in 10 seconds who you are and what you do with WordPress. You can either say what you do for a living with WordPress or how long you've been working with WordPress if you don't make a living with it. That part is totally up to you, but like 10 seconds of it. So I'll start with me. Josepha Hayden, and I don't actually do a lot of WordPress these days. I used to do a lot of um, usability testing with it, and I kind of have moved into the grander scheme of data analysis and marketing analysis. So I've gone a long way from it, but still kind of um, kind of at, at the base of what I started doing. So very near and dear to my heart. Quick couple of announcements that I want to make. Uh, we've got. I'd like to thank. Sam, Sam Cohen away. Yeah. Sam uh, was able to get us his space uh, for basically the remainder of the year, all the way out until WordCamp, and then we're going to hold WordCamp here as well. So you guys are kind of going to act as our um, as our ambassadors to the other people who are coming to the area just to go to WordCamp. If they need a bathroom, you'll be the people who know where they are. If they need to know where to go smoke, I don't know if any of you smoke, but if you do, there will be someone who can tell them where to go smoke. So big round of applause for Sam. Shane is not going to make this evening. Shane is not. Yeah, I'm just going to push breaks. Shane is my VP. Um, my position here, um, manager of IT and the web efforts here at KCPT. And one of the things that has um, received the call mention that I just probably missed it, is that we wanted to bring, I'm a huge WordPress fan. I spoke at many WordPress bird camps, yeah. the first one here in Kansas City. And um, our sites that we develop here are work in WordPress. So we, uh, it's, it's talks like this that Scott's giving, uh, helping us to, to embrace the power of WordPress using the CMS, and that's what we've done with KCP.org, that's what we do with the new radio station that we probably can't see, Johnny the Bridge, I don't know which radio station it is, but we work at Columbia University of Central Missouri. And we also doing a brand new panel center to journalism over here. So some of, the, some of the efforts there, the reported, um, the reported stories are going to be placed on WordPress core. So I love WordPress. I love the group. I've been going for a while. I missed a couple. Well, we're um, going to bring you back. So we want to have you guys get in the bottom. So welcome home, WordPress Kansas City. This is where you're going to be for the next year. Yay! <laughs> welcome home. Or be at home, because that's actually what you guys are doing. This is the weirdest setup of all time. We're going to have to figure out better way to do this, because I can't talk to my left and my right. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, so that being said, we're now going to go to the introduction part. I'm going to start over here, so I'm going to give you a second. Uh, but before I do that, Sam Cohen, you already announced who you are and what you do. So I actually just remember that. I did buy this guy some time. Your turn. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jim Rush. I'm kind of a WordPress hobbyist at this point for friends and family, and, but I've actually been a site for a, a fledgling photographer, so that would be considered a client if I were a business or not. And he is going to help us plan WordCamp Kansas City. If any of you all want to do that or speak at any of these events, we should totally listen. Um, I'm Sarah Wendy. I'm a UKC student studying computer science. Um, I set up a couple of WordPress sites for some friends that also have a blog man and a very long time. And she's a member of KC WIT. In case you do not know KC Women in Technology, she's kind of our feet on the ground at UMKC. Oh, I'm uh, Jen Grant. I own Simply Create Media and we've been doing WordPress now for about five years. It's a good amount of time. I'm Peter Inzarello. I work with Broad Internet Marketing in Dallas. I am their support specialist and WordPress trainer. Which is an awesome bit of, of trajectory for you. He started with us learning everything about WordPress. Then came because he didn't know anything, and now you are a trainer. <laughs> Success story. He's also going to be helping us to plan WordCamp Kansas City. Um, my name's Jacob Brooklson. I work for a small startup. Um, create themes, frameworks, take photos, videos, and design everything for fun. 
happens to the public. <laughs> All right. Also, a fellow WordCamp planner. You, sir? Uh, yeah, my name's uh, Andy Westendorf, and I use the WordPress for uh, website design and uh, creative production business. He joined us last month. If any of you were not there, then shame on you. <laughs> I'm Trent Swyman. I'm the front-end web designer at N Solutions. Um, I formerly used WordPress at my prior job, um, but my current job doesn't use it, so uh, right now it's just mainly for hobby purposes. I thought in your comment you said you're, you're trying to move the moment. Is it just a convincing move the moment? Uh, no, no. Uh, the one that you're working on outside. <laughs> Okay, the one I'm trying to move over is it's a site that a friend of mine built like back in 2001, built ASP.net one point one. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so it's out of date yeah. desperately. It's a huge fan site, I mean massive, and oh, I need to move that over to WordPress, but it seems so daunting because there's so much information. I think Scott will be able to at least get you to figure out what question you need to be asking. Yes, you. Okay, I'm Ed. I'm just a newbie. Just a newbie. I think you've been to like four, right? Yeah. That means you're not a newbie either. Oh, just a newbie. Word. That's totally weird. Hi, I'm Lisa Hosted. I'm a PHP slash WordPress developer. I have a company myself. Oh, that's a little And she presented at the PHP user group. In case any of you want to learn more about PHP development, I do. Then that is a good one to start with. Paul Byron, I'm a PHP developer, kind of web application developer, and doing a WordPress project right now. Okay. He also just presented at the PHP user. I don't say PCP, which is actually wrong. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Dan Holmes, I'm a PHP application developer. Um, and the partner of that group. And yes, one of the organizers of the PHP Dan. I figured he had gotten it up in on that. But, um, <laughs> Uh, but I do get to run WordPress for our group's uh, website, so that's great. And I have a couple applications that I built on WordPress for transparent solutions. Uh, my name is Camilo Snap. I am a front end developer at a small internet company. And uh, yeah. fellow planner. <laughs> I'm going to call on all of our WordCamp planners. Scott, who is speaking tonight, is also a WordCamp planner. I'm Jordan Barnes. I don't use WordPress, but I just put this guy who does. That's good. That's good. And then uh, this guy who does, so special. I, I, my name is Zach Gillen. Um, I have a small web hosting company, so I host WordPress. I'm trying to build a. What is the name of your website? It's called Gauntlet. Gauntlet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we're kind of working on like a managed WordPress solution. So. That's right. So we're the WordPress project. You should look into coming to WordCamp. I think that you would meet a lot of really interesting people that probably need your services. So Scott, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, and then we'll get ourselves started here. All right. Uh, my name is Scott Burton. Thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you for coming. Uh, okay, now let's get some ground work down. Uh, this is the first time I've spoken in front of people since high school, so be chill. Right? Uh, let me get this started. All right, so this is a question I've been trying to answer for myself for years. I really haven't come up with anything good, so you guys come up with something about no? You are Scott. I am Scott. Okay, so basically, um, I'm a web designer slash developer. After hearing your guys' uh, introductions, I think probably at least half or more of you should be up here, and I should be sitting down there. But here we go. So I've been doing web design for about 10 years. Um, at my last job, I worked for a company called Hubris Communications, our internet service provider in Wichita. Um, we didn't really use any CMSs. It was static HTML, or any CMSs. Static HTML, CSS, um, stuff like that. It's very basic. So then I moved up here to KC and uh, was working from home for them for a while, and then I started working for a company called Ascendant Integrated Media. Uh, we've been using WordPress uh, for our sites for about eight months now. It's uh, frankly been a little bit of a mess because we've been trying to convert over from this other CMS, and uh, it's got a lot of rough spots. 
Uh, I probably have intermediate knowledge. I know enough about uh, a little bit of everything to be dangerous. Um, I can run a Linux box, but not well enough that it probably won't be hacked. I can set up WordPress, but nothing like Sam could do or half you people could do. So a lot of this is going to be, hey, if you have some ideas, let me know. Uh, I'm also a meetup worker. So uh, you might have seen me at meetups, uh, various ones. Uh, I would be the guy in the back, not saying anything, and not introduce myself. So uh, nice to meet you all. All right. So I work for Ascend Integrated Media. They're a 30-year-old custom media company. And basically what that means is they write up content for people. They do uh, print, web, mobile. Um, they write up articles, create whole magazines, just about everything you need. The majority of our work is done for association conventions. So we have clients like uh, the American Heart Association, Ace Hardware, and when they have their um, conventions every year, we send a team of editors out who actually attend the different events, interview people, and then write up articles, which then get printed up into a paper that night and handed out the next day. And then, of course, we also have an online version of that, which is what I help to handle. So we also have a whole bunch of other clients. Uh, since it's medical and association stuff, if it starts with association or American association, that's most of our clients. So I can never remember what they're called. And it's a great place to work. Pretty laid back, not very high stress. Um, I really like it. So when I started, I was hired to basically do HTML emails, uh, enter in content to their CMS, um, just kind of be an HTML CSS kind of guy. They had uh, four people working in the department at the time. There were two of us front-end guys and then two .NET programmers. The CMS was very tuned to our needs because it was home built. Everything they had created from scratch. They had video, audio, and photo galleries, something called a buyer's guide, which is basically just a way to list out the exhibitors who are at these conventions. Also had a data collection. They would let the exhibitors log in and edit their information, and then that information would come back out and go into a print product, as well as being displayed online. And then maps of the convention halls, so that you nice little maps. You could have the hover points for each one of the exhibitors, kind of giving a little bit of information, and zoom in and out. They had a staging and production environment. Um, on staging, you would actually test out your content because a lot of these people don't want their stuff live until they reviewed it. Um, also, would test out code that way before pushing it out to production. Um, and that was automatic. So if we entered in something on staging, then we could just say, hey, everything that we've just entered on staging, go ahead and push it out to production, it would do it automatically. The admin interface was awful. It was just really nasty and not a lot of fun to work with. So all of the content got entered by the front end people. Um, none of the editors were allowed to touch it. Um, it had this interesting little bug where if you put in a picture with a caption and then you went in and changed like a comma or something, then that whole thing would blow out and the layout of the page would be completely messed up. It was a lot of fun. Did you work on this CMS or did you just inherit it? I inherited it. Okay. I was like, Scott, yes. I'm, I'm not a dot .NET guy. <laughs> okay. uh, so what happened was is uh, all of our developers left. And the uh, .NET guys are kind of expensive and uh, hard to find good ones. So uh, they didn't have any .NET people left. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. So we wanted to find something that could make it so that the front end people and if we ever got programmers back, those people wouldn't have to be tasked with entering in content or editing content. We wanted a large community, so it'd be easy to find help, find information. We wanted some off-the-shelf components, so we didn't have to code everything up ourselves. Uh, we were also getting rid of our in-house servers. Um, 
Ascend used to be a company of about 200 people. We had two offices, one on the East Coast, one here. Uh, there were some money problems, bankruptcy was involved, and so it kind of shrunk down into this new company. And there's about 50 people now, so we didn't need as many servers as we used to have. So we settled on WordPress, and why did we settle on WordPress? Uh, me. <laughs> right. I'm working on that. I'm I'm all excited. So I know from working at Cuba's Communications, they were a Mac shop that ran uh, free BSD on servers. So I knew command line, I knew open source stuff that we'd use there, and I'd be playing around with at home. I didn't know .NET, I'm not a Microsoft guy. So we were looking around for something, that's what I felt a lot more comfortable with. Having all the other stuff, the large community off stuff components just kind of seals the deal. So right now, we have about 75% of our sites converted which is good because our old CMS, the admin, has actually broken, and we don't have anybody to fix it. So we can't actually go in and make changes to the old site, which is a lot of fun. Um, of course, being WordPress, we've got all the bells and whistles, video, audio, and photo galleries. We do have a solution for our buyer's guides, uh, our data collection, and our maps. So now we're going to get into the meat of it. We're using the Genesis framework as our, our theme, kind of the base theme. Um, then we took one of their child themes and adapted it. So one thing I would like to go back and revisit is our themes, but we want to get this up and running as quickly as we could. We also use WooCommerce, but we don't use it for e-commerce. Um, we're using WooCommerce actually for our buyer's guides. So we set up um, basically users as the exhibitor companies. I'm sorry, I missed it. What is a, what is a buyer's guide? Is that, is that the thing that, that you do? You go into yeah. The and yeah, it's just a list of exhibitors, okay. and you can click through to more information. So let's While he's pulling this about there, he, he has arrived. You are welcome to grab something to bring or even move the button. I'm not going to pull it to you, but I will recommend it. <laughs> it's hot. Okay, so this, this is basically our buyer's guide. Um, the layout kind of differs between clients, but basically it's just a list of the different people who are exhibiting it. Right now, Ace does two shows a year, a spring and a fall. Um, and so we're actually right now getting ready to start the data collection process. So this page is actually in our navigation at the moment. Um, it is live, you can reach it, but this is not out public yet. Um, so basically, yeah, it's just a list. Uh, right now, the exhibitors, we also will be listing products that they send in. Um, but right now, we're just getting ready for data collection. So, so what we're able to do is a lot of this information is actually stored as part of the user meta table. And then we pull it in from there. Uh, categories, we actually set up a product in WooCommerce that then we can attach uh, categories to. So um, then we also did a, there aren't any products right now, but underneath the related products, all the 3M products will be pulled into there. And you can click through and see their information. 
And that's all running off of, like I said, WooCommerce. Why did you just, uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Why did you decide to use WooCommerce for this portion of the site? Uh, because I suck at custom post types at the moment. Cool. <laughs> that is as good a reason as I have to try Is it, is it, uh, you know, you have to be logged in, you have to be a certain level of user to access this information? No, uh, the information itself is, is open. Okay. Um, in fact, it'll be as part of the nav. Um, there's no special protection on this. Now, for the data collection, yeah, you do actually have to be the user account tied to that record to go in and edit. Um, I would do that, but this isn't my machine, and I have those long passwords I can never remember. Last pass. Awesome. That's why I use it. I can never remember anything. That's why I hate it. Because I never <sighs> Yeah, so <laughs> we use WooCommerce because um, I suck at custom post types, but also because it looked like it was kind of close to what we were trying to get to. Um, and after looking around, we found out, hey, uh, you know, we can hide the e-commerce portion of it, and then you've got a ready-made kind of uh, directory kind of idea. So um, WooCommerce does the kind of front-end display. And we're using a couple of other plugins. We use uh, User MetaPro to do the import of our data to set up the user accounts. So that lets us set up all the, uh, the custom fields as we're bringing our data. And then we use um, WP User Front End Pro to set up the front end that they can actually go in and edit their information on. So they go to a login page, they get redirected to that page, and it, it pulls up a couple forms that they can click through to. And these forms are just text-based stuff or checkboxes. It's nothing you know, huge, because we're, we're dealing with pretty limited information. So, so like I said, uh, some of the other stuff we use, Event Espresso. Um, that's a pretty nice little plugin. We're using that for their training sessions. So that plugin is so you can set up events that you can actually sell tickets for. Um, and you can kind of manage how many seats you have and, and all sorts of stuff like that. We're using it much for a much more basic purpose. Um, this just lets us you know, put in the information for these training sessions. They're not actually registering. They're not tracking how many people are going to be attending. This is purely informational. And then, of course, you can go ahead and use some details on uh, what it's actually about. And when they, they don't actually have room data that they gave us. Uh, as I'm sure all of you are aware, sometimes getting data from clients is, is a lot of fun. So, do you handle registrations on, on your sites at all? Or do those happen elsewhere? Not currently. Okay. The plan is that we kind of get through this first, oh my god, we have to move to a different CMS. And then we start building out some more bells and whistles. So, yeah. So right now, we're really trying to replicate what we have. And then we think that we're going to have a lot more opportunity to build out some more stuff. So some of the other things we're using. Um, so Lilliquid is our uh, nice little rotator picture deal on the front. Um, we use Uber Menu 2 for our navigation. That lets you put in uh, forms, images, all sorts of different stuff into your actual drop downs in the navigation. Um, user photo, we're doing that so we can hook up uh, if they have product images. Then somebody can actually go into that product and edit it and add an image or logos, that kind of thing. And then I also have added something that goes in, and uh, we have a, a directory that we can drop in. Uh, images identified by a SKU number, and then it will check that versus data within the, the database, and if it finds one, it uses that. So, 
Uh, of course, like I said before, country entry and editing is now mostly done by the editors. Um, if we're setting up a new site, then we'll usually do a little bit of content entry because you know we want to make sure our styles are set right. But the majority of it now done by other people, which is awesome. I really if I don't have to copy and paste a ton of stuff, I'm good with that. And then we're responsive-ish. Well, Genesis framework and their child themes are responsive by design, <clears throat> but then you put in content, and sometimes the content goes well into a responsive idea, sometimes it doesn't. And we're still kind of working out some of those kinks. Now in the past, on our old system, we did offer mobile. Um, there were two ways we did it. One was um, as a WAP application, which, you know, that's pretty old school. Uh, the other way was we outsourced. So we'd send data to somebody else and they'd build, a, build an app for us. Um, and then we charged for both of those. So now the responsive dish is just a freebie. That's just part of it. Um, so again, when things kind of calm down, that's one of those things we've got to go back and revisit and do better. So so as we move forward, some of the things that you know, as, as we're kind of getting into this. Um, I see a lot of awesome stuff out there that I really want to do that I don't know how to do yet. Uh, one of those is we would really like to get back to where we can stage our content um, and have it reviewed before we actually push it out live. Um, there's a plugin, I think it's called Ramp, that um, I think does that to a certain extent. It actually lets you go through and see, I've got these database changes. I want to push this one out, but not that one. I haven't used it yet. What was it called? I think it's Ramp. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's one of our big, our big problems. And the other big problem is we don't actually have a staging server right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, right now we've got one virtual server um, hosted here locally. And then we're going to repurpose some of our IIS servers after they we finally kill off the old CMS completely as a staging and development environment, but we can't do that yet. Oh, I know what we use here. I don't know if anybody heard of it. It's called uh, Desktop Server. It's made by server parts. And what they um, also is, is a straight, um, it, they're built on XAMPP, T-A-M-P-P uh, system. And what we, what we did is we used it with our Windows uh, uh, Windows Server 7, which supports DNS uh, domain names. So we can actually set up a domain name in the, the company. And when we go to a domain name, we actually don't go into the IP address of the server or computer that we have desktop server set up. So, we, so desktop server does something that's pretty interesting. It, it actually installs WordPress and WordPress MU onto that computer. Um, before you have your staging environment, you need to access it um, through an IP address of that server on the computer and get that system. So that's what we use for it. So you can actually reach that from, like, you can send that out to a client and have them take a look at it? So the way you would have to actually uh, allow clients to look at it, you have to set up, of course, you have to open up your port 80 on your router and then set up something like, um, you can forward your domain name, um, you go to your, you go to support no, like, no IP, so the DNS server service, mm -hmm. no dash IP, and have that forward to their IP address in the browser. But of course, most cable companies or internet service providers only give you a dynamic IP address, which never change, so they want to stay standard. <laughs> um, but there are software like no IP or, uh, or others that actually detects the latest updates to the IP address that the internet service provider provides and changes it for you. So it, I, I actually set up one that I used to work for myself um, and it worked quite well. So to open those ports and make sure it's secure, clients are connected to you. Now, once you've got uh, you've got your stuff on staging and everything and people have looked at it, then how are you actually, how are you actually moving that to the production environment? Well, that's going to take a little, that's kind of tricky. I think that's the, the 
the biggest yeah. problem that everybody is trying to solve when it comes to transferring workplace. Um, I have my own system. I developed a plugin that I never released yet. That kind of did it. That backed up the files and opened several live uh, sessions. And then you imported it and put everything into this place. But um, this, if you look on the internet, this many ways we can do it. That's how we do it. We do a movie straight into the log environment. Oh, I'll take a look at that. This is why I'm here. Is this a local ICO server? Are you talking about the desktop The desktop server is made by serverpress.com. They have a free version and they have a paid version. It comes with all that. It comes with the MySQL. Anything as Ample, you can use as Ample. It's a free open source server, MySQL, and a whole bunch of other stuff. They built their software on this AMP, but the way their software works is it's, it's purely um, made to install WordPress instantly into the, uh, the environment. So, you know, if you're a WordPress developer um, and you set up your AMP server and you want to install WordPress, you have to go through a couple of steps with it, extract WordPress, and you know, make a database. This stuff certainly does all of it for you. All you do is click, you put your WordPress you want to install, and it comes up. There's another one that I use that does the same thing. It also lets you put it on a thumb drive and let people look at it if you want it anywhere on top of your thumb drive. So when you walk around, you've got full, full WordPress on your thumb drive, put it in the machine. And it is. So that would be a way to show people that it was local. And then uh, I use Sitecraft for hosting. They, they have that all built in. So that nice. you your staging area, one button, click it over. <laughs> Now, is that just moving the like, files, or is that actually moving it's your host exchanges? It's your whole hosting. Well, the hosting service includes your staging built into their service. Because so. one of the issues that we're kind of running into is on some of these sites, you know, like for these data collection sites especially, we have that's being changed as we're you know, making changes on staging. So that's one of the difficulties we're running into. You know, is how do we backport that and then push it back forward without running into somebody, you know? Um, I'm just wondering, are you trying to sync the staging and production databases? Is that the challenge? Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. Without, you know, we want to be able to, to make changes to the data on staging okay. and, and then push those out to our production environment okay. without overwriting so you probably get like user and read right errors a lot just because people are running on top of each other. Yeah, and it's a lot of conflicts, right? So you'd like to like, and that's what we're testing yeah. at the moment. We don't have that problem because we don't actually have a student sort of set up. So <laughs> but pushing out production that may be like Yeah. Like for this A site we wanted to site we wanted to test. Um, we've actually done one iteration of the A site. So when we got the data again from them for this next convention. We want to make sure that our load system was working. So we just copied the site over on the same server, ran our imports, checked to make sure you know, did some data QA, and then, OK, looks good. We did the same process on the live server. Um, so yeah, it's it's messy. Um, I've got a lot of lot of way to go to, uh, to get it to something that's a little bit more sane. So, but you know, getting, getting anybody to move from one set of tools to another, even in the brush, broad stroke way, is hard enough as it is. We're doing that with, with two separate systems in my office right now, simultaneously, and I think that everybody wants to kill everything else. Like, yeah. it's, and we're not doing the hard stuff yet, is the thing. Like, we're just saying, we no longer are using this. Please put this piece of text in this thing instead. And we're like, no, I don't want to. And it's just, this is. No matter how you do it. Well, we're actually doing something similar because we're moving the CMS uh, in my department. Well, then the whole company had uh, home built um, stuff for financial and project management and all this kind of stuff, and uh, they're moving it to Microsoft, uh, Project Stream, SharePoint, all that kind of stuff, and that's been a huge sound of change. Yeah. Um, but there's just no point in using a load of proprietary tools that as soon as that one developer that was dedicated to it leaves, you can never be taken. Yeah. Like, it's just great. 
and, and that was part of the other reason why we chose WordPress because um, I'm a pretty loyal guy. Uh, I was at my last job for eight years, but you know, I want to want to go try some other stuff out eventually. So we wanted to pick something that it, you know we'd be able to find. So yeah, so yeah, this the staging production thing is is probably our biggest biggest headache right now. Um, so, and then of course we want to right now you know we install WordPress and we install the plugins and we can set up the data, but we're doing this kind of well, basically we never sat down and planned all this out, which I'm not a big fan of, but it was kind of okay we need this up right now, and. They have these events, and they're at a set date, and they're not going to move when they're at these convention centers for us. So um, I would like to go back and kind of standardize our WordPress, uh, kind of get a set of code that we've got what we use, and update that set, and then push out. Um, data collection, it's a usability nightmare. Um, the forms are awful. There's really no indication right now of if I submit, did it actually update? Or do I have to go look again and see if it actually updated? Uh, I like to talk about better responsive style, um, content placement. We're a heavy in print company. And so we have graphics designers, um, but they're print designers. And trying to get them to get around the idea of, okay, well, you need to kind of have the thought of how we're going to do this mobile when you start this, rather than at the end when you hand it off your pocket. Um, I'm always looking for new plugins. Um, there are a lot, but I've got this whole big long list of links that I want to go and try out when I have them. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is, is build our own plugins. Like I said, uh, WooCommerce has been kind of working, but uh, not. I can see a lot of problems that we're going to have with it. So I would like to kind of build our own uh, custom post type, build some of our own stuff. In fact, the uh, the search form for our buyer's guide is custom. So we don't use the, uh, the standard WooCommerce search. So what's your budget for this? Budget? <laughs> the boss tells me to do it, and I do it. <laughs> uh, you know, we, I see the number of hours that we have allocated they don't let me do numbers. Uh, if you saw my checking account, you know why. Um, but I've seen the number of hours, and they typically allocate 20 hours to get a site from nothing up, which they're going to find out when they go to the Project Stream in a few months and try and figure out how much time we're actually spending. It's not matching up. But that's what they're that's what they're budgeting for, and that's developer time. That's not uh, design time or anything else. QA, anything like that. What do you estimate uh, between development and design you guys do spend hour-wise to get a site up? You know, frankly, I've had my head in the weeds so much that I have to kind of step back and look at that. And it's also kind of difficult because, oddly enough, the um, a good portion of the graphics and the design takes place on the print side. We do have a graphics designer in our e-media group, but uh, he kind of gets that stuff and uh, works with it to create our layout for the page. And he's very irritating because he will turn that around in about half an hour to an hour. Then, of course, you add a couple days on to get approval from the client or a couple weeks or a couple months, depending on the client. Um, but he's always got his stuff waiting on me. I'm the slow point, frankly, in our, our operation. You do the most. Hmm? You do the most. I want to. I just want to mention uh, one good uh, responsive uh, framework. I know you mentioned James earlier, but uh, this too has actually comes to mind. This foundation, which is really good, a lot of theme makers of music and bootstrap. Yeah, and both of those have WordPress themes built off of them already. And no, uh, they just updated bootstrap not too long ago, about a month or two months ago, to the latest version. And so, I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of bootstrap. Um, and I use it in a lot of my development. Uh, some plugins, I think, uh, some of the main plugins that I use, I think the best plugin, hands down, 
I kind of mentioned before, I think from my old desk, but it was an uh, admin menu editor. Mm -hmm. That was the, my, my, the first desk plug I ever used. But I think the desk plug I ever used was made by Elliot uh, uh, Corden. He makes uh, advanced custom uh, advanced custom fields. And that's the best plugin. Yes, that, that's probably that's probably hands down the best plugin ever. I mean, what's the name? Advanced custom field, and it's spelled that way. Advancedcustomfields.com. And he makes some other ones too. He maybe just made a short code to plug in, um, which you have yet to try out. For for your form efforts, grab the forms all the way. Yeah, yeah we're actually using Compact Form yeah. Seven or Compact Forms. It does, it does much more. Yeah. He's contact form seven too. He wants to try yeah. gravity form. And I was like, yeah, yeah this is doesn't even matter. I mean, it, it's not just uh, just for uh, uh, getting data data to form. You can just do much more. You can actually. So you can like tie. Uh, if you have a user record, you can tie them on writing form and everything. Gravity forms. And you can do, use it to create posts, <laughs> create user, user accounts, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Nice. Conditional logic. Yeah. Nice. Uh, the only thing about advanced custom fields is it does not. Have a built-in function for creating actual post types, so you still do have to have a foundation in creating post types. Right. But other than that, you can get around for how you can use these actual foundation. 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 Yeah, right. um, yeah, and they're getting ready to come out with a new version. Here. Yeah, they have a like site. Foundation with emergency. It's not emergency. Something. Yeah, and they have a website that that you can use to create your custom post types. Once you create your custom post type, you can just keep copying the and you change the name. So once you create it once, you always have it. Um, but yeah, and I've kind of looked at even just if you, even if you're just creating it you know, directly in code, it doesn't look all that complicated. Um, it just I've been trying you to transfer the next meetup thing will be custom post types. I'm there. Yeah. Awesome. I can do that. Write it down. Custom post types, not me personally. I'm not for this. <laughs> I can find something. That's what it is. So, for each of these sites, are they individual WordPress sites, or are you using multi-site WordPress? Uh, we actually started with multi-site, because um, I thought, hey, how awesome is that? Um, and then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We just started putting out a magazine called Sense Golden Guide. It's kind of a senior living resource uh, magazine. And that is still in multi-sites. I've got two or three sites I need to break out of that because uh, yeah, it was not good. It's not good. It's only good if you use MultiDB, uh, which is a, a plug -in, not a plugin. It's a way to um, make your databases similar to the databases you create from single stand on purpose. And that was my issue with purpose. I love purpose and you on, on how you can administrate the, the multi accounts. And there's other sites that help you. As well, manage WP as well. But um, multi DB is a way that you can actually break out each database with new one on That's That was the thing that allowed me to continue on use. And there are some kind of special things about our websites. Um, they're very ephemeral, you know, they're event driven. So once the event is over, nobody comes to them. Uh, so you know, SEO isn't as needed. As some clients, um, and they're kind of you know, temporary. -ish. So, uh, but yeah. And then one of the other things uh, I'd like to take a look at is the backbone and underscore integration. It's in WordPress now. But you know, that's like over here right now, down here. So, we'll get there. So, I don't know if I'll post this up, but there's all the stuff that we use. And of course, it's all about me. <laughs> so, um, if you guys do freelance stuff, if you do, um, you might have work, so let me know. Um, he has cards and sends me the Yeah, uh, part cards. of getting to use the logo <laughs> was I would bring. Our handy dandy brochures. I so, wish it was the golden guy. I know, I should rustle it. <laughs> should rustle it. Right. Any, does anyone have any questions about what we are talking about? Yes, sir. I can have a question about how did you go about picking your plugins? Were you 
looking for things that, to solve problems? Or were you looking through plugin catalogs and, ooh, that would be great on the site? Or what kind of methodology did you have to, because you've got a great list of plugins. Uh, there were uh, three processes. So one was the boss went, ooh, and let's do that. Um, so the boss found a whole bunch, and uh, then we kind of tried them out. And there were some that kind of went by the wayside. We actually have uh, three different ways that we're doing these uh, buyer's guides. Um, one is, uh, I think it's called directory press, and it's basically a theme, not a plugin. Um, and then we also have another one, it's a business directory, and it's a plugin, but it's much more, uh, it's not as, as nice to work with. Um, and that's the other thing that I, I've kind of found that drives me nuts is I'm coming from a, I build HTML and CSS static sites myself, I'm used to having control, and uh, you don't get that a lot sometimes with plugins. Um, they use their CSS, they use my, a lot of them like this stuff, but you know, important on the end. Uh, <laughs> the one, uh, Uber Menu actually took me off because when we first started, um, you could actually tell it to drop its style sheet, and then you could just dump all those styles into your own, and it would use that. And they made a change, and now you can still do that, but they still have this basic uh, .css. You actually have to go in and tell it, don't load that in your code. Um, so I know they're trying to make it easier for people who aren't CSS people to use, but uh, sometimes that's kind of a pain. Were there any plugins that you got up and running in this and you thought, well, like, this just makes me so angry. I'm taking it out, I'll never do it again. You're having it really, really fail. You, it doesn't even have to make you angry. It can just not have worked like what you wanted it to do. <laughs> uh, there were a couple plugins, and they made me angry, so I, I tried, I'm trying to be a happy person. <laughs> so I tried to forget them to move on with my life. Uh, but there were some for like uh, custom logins uh, and that type of thing that uh, just was not good. They were just too hard to work with. Double piggyback. Have you taken any um, of the plugins that you just love, and then have you gone with, like built a plugin for you know, the plugin or the plugin? Have you guys still been doing that at all? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, there is for WooCommerce, I think there's a CSV importer. Yeah. And, uh, or no, it's not even true, because I had to add a whole bunch of fields to it to get stuff to show up in WooCommerce. So it's, it's just a CSV importer of some yeah. kind. And, uh, yeah, it wouldn't do everything I wanted it to do. So I kind of manipulated that one. Um, WooCommerce, too, the nice thing about WooCommerce is you can bring the templates out into your theme. Mm -hmm. and modify them there so when you do updates, it doesn't get overwritten. Yeah. Um, so we've messed around with that a lot. Yeah, I've found that clients that have a limited budget, um, but wants to be great. A lot of times that's the best solution, right? You just have a plug-in out of the box because it, because it does so much great stuff and does most of what they want to do on their side. Mm -hmm. But there's just one piece that's sort of missing, and so then you just, I mean, that's all they can go for. You know, yeah. It's just, just to... Uh, build an extra plugin that works in conjunction with the existing plugin. Uh, yeah. And and one challenge that, we, that I have that we have is um, uh, staying up to date with version releases on those plugins that you're building a plugin on top of. Right. I mean, it's enough to um, stay on top of WordPress version releases. And make sure that all the plugins that you have out there and all of your client sites work proper. Um, with those subsequent version releases, but then to, you know, so I, I, I guess my question is, how do you manage all of that? <laughs> That's one big challenge that we have. Uh, we don't, <laughs> or very poorly, I guess is a better answer. So not much maintenance. Yeah, um, and one of the things we are kind of looking at is, you know, there are several different things out there that will let you hook into all of your WordPress installs and will let you know where you're at on all your different versions. Uh, Infinite WP, I think, is one I kind of looked at. Um, there are a couple others that in my research I found. Um, so we're going to be installing that. Um, you know, there's so much that I know I'm doing wrong right now that is driving me nuts. But at the same point in time, I just don't have time. Yeah, time, budget, yeah. all that stuff. Is yeah. 
this is where this is. Cool. Um, what we haven't seen though is a security plugin. Is there one right under the other? I'm using WordFence. I was actually just going to mention that. I think uh, WordFence or Better WP Security uh, has an option to send you a notification if you need updates on any of your plugins. Yes. So you yes. together or? Yeah, I use both of those two together, and it seems to cover pretty much all aspects that I need for WordPress security. Yeah. And the other thing I like about WordFence is you'll get an email if they find you. Yeah. There's a you're going to get hacked the other plugin and so you need to update them or get that email. And yeah, yeah. But but then again, that's that's another another pain point um, that we have. So I'll ask you another one. Um, I wonder. I missed a little bit at the beginning, so forgive me if you're repeating yourself for my sake, but. Um, I wonder what hosting solutions do you use? Have you guys tried um, Git Flywheel? Have you tried Flywheel? Um, have you tried WP Engine? Because um, they have staging solutions. Um, right. You can just kind of wheel up and you know get commit into the staging environment and, and then blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> Finds and lost sites. Mm -hmm. It's really fast. Yeah, so the business model is here too. Yeah, yeah. 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 And right now we're using uh, Net Standard in town for our hosting. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea what the uh, numbers are on that. I did find out just today because I screwed something up and lost a whole bunch of analytics uh, that our backups are four day snapshots, and that's as far back as they go. Really? Oh awesome. my God. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know what the agreement is um, because I wasn't including my Apache logs in my back. The backups that we're actually doing on our own, uh, well, that's going to change. So, uh, yeah, they weren't too happy about that. We actually have a demerit system at work, and so I kind of marked out the demerit today. So. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I missed this already, but did you say what your old CMS was, or did you not? Well, it, it's, it was a custom .NET. Custom dot. Oh, it was your own custom. Yeah, yeah, they used to have like eight to twelve programmers, and so they built everything in house. All of our financial stuff, project management stuff, and then the CMS was all built in house. So are you converting in code somewhere? Are you converting the tables, or are you just cutting and pasting information from one to the other? What are you doing? Right. Um, you know, like data export import from the .NET. To, yeah, I would say <laughs> okay, so um, the content that we we're looking at moving over would be your standard articles, that kind of thing. Um, we weren't looking at moving over any of our data collection or anything um, because that changes every every go round. Um, for the content, at first I was sitting down looking, and I figured out a way I could. Export it and bring it into something and reformat it so it would be a WordPress post kind of import. And then I ran out of time and we've been farming out, copying and pasting. Uh, yeah. So we go out and we ask the client, you know, hey, how much how much back data do you want? And uh, these should go back about a year or two years. And for the majority of these, we have three to four what are called preview issues before the meeting. With about ten to fifteen articles, then we have three to four dailies at the convention with fifteen to twenty, and then one after. So it takes three or four hours to convert over. It's just copy and paste. Anything that you suggest not with? Uh, just from 
Yeah, uh, make sure that um, that you're careful about if you don't have a staging environment, that you're careful about what you're doing. This I have kind of messed up and had to go back to the backups and grab stuff. Um, WordPress itself. Kind of take a look and plan out things if you can, especially if you're doing this kind of move from a CMS. You know, if, if you're just playing around with WordPress, it's great, but you know, if we could have sat down and taken a look at stuff from the beginning, uh, I think our process would have been a lot more smooth. But time, money, all that. So. so how many sites did you wind up then? One main site there? Or a bunch of sites on ongoing, or only new sites being created for that. Right. So we started off; uh, it was just new stuff. So if a new event was coming up, we move over to their old content. Uh, you know, set up a new site, move over their old content, and go from there forward. Um, however, then we started. Okay, we want to. They're looking to save money. In fact, we won an award. For saving money just <laughs> now, which recently from a Kansas City Business Journal or somebody. I don't know. Everybody else got to go to lunch tonight. Uh, so they're cutting down on all our servers that we run in house. They're cutting down on all the stuff. So, um, so yeah, they, they want to, to save money. So we're going to move all this stuff so we can. The deadline to move every site over is the end of December. And then they're going to turn off the IS servers. I can tell you right now that's not going to happen. Why do you care? Exactly. Uh, so I'm hoping that within a month or two after, that will actually be done. But uh, when I started, it was funny because when I came on board, I, I asked them, okay, well, what's your busiest time like? I'm like, eh, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, we do work in the evening when they do these papers. You know, I send this stuff and we have to work in the evening. And so that's about as bad as it gets. I'm like, okay, I can do that. And then I started, and for the first two months, I swear I didn't do anything. <laughs> Nothing. Except I went through tutorial after tutorial online and did stuff on my own, and I was going nuts. And they kept telling me, well, oh, yeah, it's just kind of slow right now, and they're, it's seasonal. Okay, I don't know what they were talking about because I still have yet to see this mythical downtime when we can get caught up on everything, make everything right. Uh, I'm hoping it's coming, but you know, there used to be four of us, now there's me. So, well, congratulations. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Last man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I encourage you all, as I was encouraging you all evening, to grab some pizza, take me home with me. The dogs will eat it? The, do the dog will not eat it, actually. The dog will spoil bread. So, um, feel free to stand up and chat with each other. You do not have to take your steak on your table. I have a lot of faces. I know Travis, I love you come in, and you can chat with me because you're doing know, it. Don't see me when you're when everybody gets up and so
Bye, everybody at home.